Hi there, in today's video we're gonna talk about the VOR approach. In this video I'm gonna tell you what you have to look at on the VOR chart and when flying a VOR approach and then on a part two we're gonna go into a simulator, we're gonna actually fly the VOR approach and we put in practice what we just said in this video. All right, without further ado, let's jump right into it. Hi there, I'm Gabriel from PilotClient.com. I'm a training captain on the Boeing 737 and I help you to become a better pilot. So consider subscribing to the channel in order not to miss the next video. In the next video, we're gonna actually put in practice what we're gonna say today about the VR approach and we fly the VR approach into the simulator. All right, without further ado, let's talk about VR approaches. The first thing that we need to know when flying a VR approach is that it is a non-precision approach. So if you compare the VR approach, which is a non-precision, to a precision approach like the ILS, you will see that the ILS is going to have a lateral guidance and a vertical guidance. So the ILS has the localizer and a glide slope. So the difference is that with the ILS you will know at all time what if you are slightly to the left or slightly to the right or if you are above or below your uh, correct final, okay, your correct descent, okay, your final descent. On the VR approach, in the other hand, you're going to have a lateral guidance which is a radial that come out of the VOR but you will not have a, a vertical guidance. So you will not have any glide slope that will tell you at all times if you are slightly above or slightly below, all right? What you got in the VR approach is you got distances and altitude. So if you go into your chart of your VOR chart, okay, VR approach chart, you will see that has got for every miles normally has got an altitude. And that is your job to cross that distance, that, that nautical miles at that altitude. And that is really the biggest difference because in there you need to constantly cross check the, the altitude and the distance. So the difference that um, if you fly an ELS, you just get established on the glide drop, you make sure that that, that glide slope is actually the correct one and you descend and you just follow the glide slope. On the VOR approach, on the other hand, what you're gonna have to do, you're gonna have to change constantly your rate of descent in order to meet that minimum altitude requirement. So let's say the difference between an ILS approach and a VOR approach is that if you get established on 10 miles, you get the glide slope and you descend. Fine, perfect. On the VR approach, you get established on the radial inbound at 10 miles, and then, for example, you need to be there at 3,000 feet, okay, and then you have to check, okay, 10 miles, 3,000. Then you need to check the next altitude, that's gonna be probably 9 miles, 2,700, so you descend and you constantly cross check your altitude and your distance, okay, so you need to make sure that those are actually correct and you cross the 9 miles at 2,700 feet. If you reach 2,700 feet before the 9 miles, that means that you descending with a higher rate of descent compared to the one on the chart, okay? If that happened, then not a big deal, okay? You just need to level off, wait until the nine miles and then start descent. So as you can see, it's a little bit more complex to fly a non-precision approach, in this case a VR approach, compared to an ILS approach, because the ILS approach, once you get established on the glide drop, you will know live, let's say, you will know at all times with a glide drop if you are on the glide drop slightly below, slightly above. So it, it is a lot easier to perform a constant descent approach, okay, a nice smooth three degrees all the way down. On the VR approach, however, you might be required to change your vertical speed in order to meet this requirement or increase the vertical speed. Because let's say that at nine miles you are not at 2,700 feet as the chart uh, indicates, but you are at uh, 2,800 feet or 2,900 feet, that means that you are above the profile of the VR approach and that means that you need to increase your rate of descent, okay? Another thing that is paramount to identify on the VR approach is the FAF, the final approach fix. I made a complete separate video about that, so I will strongly recommend to watch that because in there you're gonna get a very good knowledge about that, okay? So you need to identify your final approach fix and respect that. In there, you really need to be at that distance and at that altitude, okay? So you can make corrections before the final approach fix. However, at the final approach fix, you need to make sure that you are in there, okay? So if, for example, the final approach fix is at six miles and the altitude is 1,800 feet, you need to be six miles, 1,800 feet, because in there is an altitude check that you are actually correct on the profile on the VOR, okay? It is extremely important not to bust the FAF altitude, okay? Some VOR approaches has got the distance and altitude like the VOR DME because you have a VOR that sends a, that has got a radial and that's your lateral uh, guidance and then you have a DME that gives you the distance, okay? 
some VR approaches are timed approach. So if you have only the VR and you don't have the DME, you will have a timed VR approach. That means that instead of using distances, you will use time. So the time non precision approach are less precise than the VR DME approaches, okay? Because the time, it really depends where you, you start the clock and so on, okay? So another very important thing to understand is that when you fly a non precision approach, you really need to understand what you're doing. You really need to understand your chart. I've seen so many times people find the non precision approach not really understanding when they had to turn, what, what was their radial outbound, what was the radial inbound, and so on. So it is very important that before flying a non precision approach, you actually read and understand in full your uh, procedure, your chart, okay? Because I can tell you that for sure, 100%, if you cannot understand your approach chart, when you are in cruising brief in the approach chart, it will be a lot harder to understand your chart once you are actually flying it. Because you're going to be busy trying to fly in the plane and trying to understand your chart. That's why a good briefing, a good preparation is paramount. Okay? Normally, what I can tell you is once you know your radials, once you know what radius you have to intercept, and once you know what is your rate of descent that you have to maintain, you'll be okay throughout your approach, right? So it is very important to understand, okay, for example, step by step where you have to fly. So for example, you have to overfly the VR, then you have to understand, okay, now I have to turn right, intercept that radial outbound until that miles, and then I can descend from there to there, and then, and so on, okay? Have a clear idea of what you have to do, okay? In the next video, we're gonna actually fly a VR approach on the Boeing 737, and I'll show you how I actually do that, okay? So stay tuned for that video. In that video, we'll, uh, we're going to go through the chart. I'm going to show you how I brief the chart. And then I'm going to show you what I'm going to do when I fly the approach. Because the briefing is essential, but as well to be active when you actually flying the VR approach is even more important. Because when you fly the approach, you constantly need to cross-check what you have to do next. Okay, the next thing is very important. Never sleep. Okay, don't re don't get relaxed. If you fly the VR approach, especially on non precision approach, you really need to be ahead of your plane. Okay, so when you start the approach, your aircraft is at the beginning of the approach, but your head. Okay, you need to be already and in the next point, okay? You need to be ahead of the plane, okay? If you are in the same position, if, if your head is in the same position of the plane, that's wrong, okay? You need to be one step forward, okay? So if you're starting the approach, you need to think already on the next turn. When you're on the other turn, you need to think about already your final approach. When you're on nine miles, you need to think about your eight miles altitude and so on. Being ahead of the plane will really makes your uh, approach to be a lot smoother and a lot better. All right, so I hope you like this video about the VR approach. I made already one video where I've flown with the Simulator X-Plane 11, a VR approach on a Cessna 172. If you want to watch that video, watch the following video. However, stay tuned. In the next video, we're going to brief and prepare for a VR approach, and then we're going to shoot a VR approach with a Boeing 737. All right, if you like the video, give it a like and consider subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, leave in the comment below, and then I will, uh, I will help you out. I wish you a great day, and I'll see you soon.